Nothing lasts forever, and no one lasts forever, including animals. For various reasons, they become extinct and disappear as a species. But the good news is that science is already well advanced, and scientists are able to resurrect them. Which animals have they already brought back from the other world? And which ones are they planning to revive? And how will scientists do it? You'll find it out in this episode. Let's go. By the way, the idea for making this episode came to me when one of my subscribers sent me this picture. According to him, it shows a once extinct armadillo species. Do you think this animal's real or not? Share your thoughts in the comments. And next, I'll show you 100% real animals that are going to be resurrected. Yes, they're going to be. The thing is that although science is perfectly developed and the great minds of the planet are able to work miracles, bringing an animal back from the dead and restoring the whole species are still extremely difficult tasks. Nevertheless, once scientists manage to resurrect an extinct animal, this has only happened once, which means that in the future it will work out too. I'm talking about the Pyrenean Ibex, which is also known as Bacardo. Many experts on fauna may object now, like, what are you talking about? After all, this species is still alive and feel good today. The cliffs and mountains of Spain and Portugal are full of these animals, and the species itself is not threatened. That's true. But this species includes several subspecies, and I'll tell you about one of them, that very Bacardo. The subspecies was recognized as extinct in January 2000 when the last individual, a female named Celia, died. But scientists weren't about to give up just yet. They saved Celia's cells and began to think about how they could bring the wild goat back from the dead. They came up with the idea of cloning Celia. A few years later, they inserted the nuclei of Celia's cells into goat eggs which had previously been freed of their own DNA. The scientists created embryos, which they then implanted into the uteruses of 57 goats. Seven of the goats became pregnant, and only one gave birth. It gave birth to a clone of Celia. It would seem it was the legendary success. The researchers managed to revive the subspecies. But the jubilation didn't last long. The baby goat lived for just 10 minutes. But in fact, the experiment can't be called a complete failure. Resurrecting an extinct animal, even for 10 minutes, is already a success. Science is developing. Scientists already know what to do and how to do it, which means that in the future, they'll be able to try again. And Bacardo will once again walk on our planet. Passenger Pigeon It seems that pigeons cannot become extinct at all. There are too many of them, and they're everywhere. But unfortunately, human is capable of exterminating anything at all. The passenger pigeon was the most common bird in North America, in its homeland, and in the whole world in general. In the 16th and 18th centuries, there were 5 billion of them. But then the Native Americans started hunting them, followed by the Europeans, all just to get the pigeon meat. Other factors also played a role, and already at the beginning of the 20th century, there were no wild passenger pigeons left. And in 1914, the last captive passenger pigeon, a female named Martha, died. We all have a chance to remedy the situation. The passenger pigeon is almost the main candidate for the role of an extinct creature that will be resurrected first. And it could happen soon. Scientists have a clear plan. They want to recreate the genome of the passenger pigeon by combining DNA fragments from different samples. They then plan to insert the DNA into the nuclei of stem cells of the common pigeon or the band-tailed pigeon and make them turn into embryo cells from which the bird's sex organs will later form. After that, scientists plan to implant the cells in eggs from which chicks will hatch, looking like a common or band-tailed pigeon but containing DNA of the extinct bird in their cells. All that remains is to crossbreed the hatched birds. The result will have the characteristics of the passenger pigeon. Dodo You might not have known about the passenger pigeon, then probably everyone knows the dodo bird. It's the most famous extinct bird, and its fate is similar to that of the American pigeon. The dodo used to live quietly in Mauritius, minding its own business, when suddenly Dutch navigators arrived on the island. It happened in 1598, and in 1662 there were no dodos left on the planet. They were eaten by sailors, their pets, as well as other animals that people brought to Mauritius. 
The dodo simply couldn't withstand such an onslaught, an invasion, and a change of elements in the ecosystem. However, some people believe that the dodo is not completely extinct and show modern photos and videos of the bird. It's not known if this is true or not. As far as I'm concerned, everything's possible. But even if it is, the species is worth restoring, and scientists are actively pursuing this goal. They've collected several biological samples from which DNA can be isolated and obtained. The samples, by the way, come from dried bird heads. Thankfully, there are quite a few stuffed dodos in the world. So far, scientists have only partially restored the bird DNA and began to compare its genes with the DNA of modern birds, potential relatives of the dodo. This is important because the species can be restored only by introducing its genes into the egg cell of a living organism from a common family. The scientists have not yet achieved any special results, but if they continue their work, these birds may well reappear in Mauritius in a couple of decades. Mammoth It's probably the most famous extinct animal in the world. Only some dinosaurs can challenge this title. However, unlike the dinosaurs, mammoths died out not so long ago by historical standards. It happened about 10 to 12,000 years ago. And some populations died out much later. There are some mammoths that lived when the Egyptian pyramids were already built. In addition, unlike the hot Mauritius, mammoths lived in cold regions, and this is a very important point. Their bodies are found in permafrost, and this is, in fact, an ideal morgue for ancient animals. There, the bodies decompose extremely slowly and retain a lot of genetic material. Scientists find mammoths often, and frequently they get bodies that are preserved almost perfectly. It means only one thing. To resurrect mammoths is quite real. Moreover, it'll be much easier to revive these ancient woolly elephants than many other extinct animals. To resurrect the woolly mammoth, scientists plan to apply genetic engineering technologies and use the DNA of mammoths and elephants. After all, modern elephants are the closest relatives of mammoths, as well as the only candidates for the role of surrogate mothers. In simple terms, if scientists do everything right, they can make an ordinary elephant give birth to a real mammoth. But in reality, of course, everything is much more difficult. It's not easy to get the genome out, but the scientists are confident they can do it. They're going to revive mammoths in the near future and are already preparing a territory for them in the Arctic tundra. Thylacine Outwardly, it's a small wolf or a dog. Its color is like that of a tiger, and by nature, it's a flesh-eating marsupial. The thylacine was such a hodgepodge. It's also known as the Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger. It lived in New Guinea and Australia, but died out there quite a long time ago. A large population of thylacines persisted in Tasmania until the 1830s, when a mass extermination of these animals, which were considered the main enemies of farmers' sheep, began. Already in the 20th century, there were only a few of them left, and in 1936, the last thylacine died. But theorists don't believe this. As in the case of the dodo, they believe that a few flesh-eating marsupial wolves are still remaining on the planet and show various videos as proof, though they're still questionable. Still, it's very likely that the thylacine is completely extinct, but they plan to resurrect it. About 20 years ago, scientists began work on the creation of a thylacine clone using the DNA of puppies of this animal, which were preserved in alcohol in the museum. They even managed to extract the DNA but the material turned out to be unusable. Then the scientists tried to make some genes of the flesh-eating marsupial work in a mouse embryo. It did not give special results, that's all for now, but the work continues and it's funded by the Australian government itself, which means that success is likely. Cave Lion Scientists can expect success with this animal as well. The cave lion lived in Europe and Siberia until it became extinct about 10,000 years ago. It's possible that in the future this big cat will live in these regions again because the chances of his resurrection are very good. Firstly, the cave lion is a subspecies of the modern African lion. That is, it's as close as possible to it in terms of genomes. And when it comes to the revival of extinct animals, this factor is the main. In theory, some lioness will be able to give birth to a cave lion, if scientists do everything right. 
Secondly, the cave lion became extinct not so long ago by historical standards, and there's enough biological material and DNA reconstruction. As in the case of mammoths, scientists often find the remains of cave lions which are well preserved and from which they can take genetic material. If scientists reconstruct the cave lion DNA, then they'll try to embed it into the genome of a modern African lion, and the ancient big cat will be resurrected. So far, scientists have managed to reconstruct DNA only partially. But who knows? Maybe soon they'll find several more bodies of the ancient lions, complete with DNA, and implement their incredible project. What do you think animals from other planets might look like? Would they look like xenomorphs? Or is their appearance beyond our comprehension? Let's find it out! Scorpions and Lizards Let's start with the creatures that live very close to us. On a cosmic scale, of course. The first stop is Venus. Three years ago, scientists from Novosibirsk State University in Russia studied images of the surface of Venus, which were made by apparatus, and recorded about two dozen slowly moving objects, shaped like a scorpion, a lizard, and a mushroom. At first, one would assume that they were rocks, but the objects still changed their location from image to image, so we may be talking about real, live creatures. The question arises, how could there be life on Venus if the temperature on this planet is 842 degrees Fahrenheit? Scientists believe that alien life forms do not necessarily have to be similar to life on Earth. Accordingly, the conditions necessary for their birth and maintenance may also differ from what we're accustomed to. So far, it's not entirely clear whether scorpions and lizards really live on Venus, but if the hypothesis is confirmed, it would be a scientific breakthrough. Octopuses Interesting creatures may live on Europa as well. Although it's not a planet but a satellite, Jupiter's satellite to be exact, the hypothesis is also interesting. Scientists believe that octopuses may live on Europa. The thickness of ice on the satellite of the gas giant can be up to 15 miles in some places, so it's not excluded. Octopuses are bethnic animals, although some species on our planet live in the water column. This means that it's the cephalopod-like creatures that can survive under 15 miles of ice. Also, octopuses, because of their lack of a skeleton, can change shape, which would be useful in the harsh environment of Jupiter's satellite. In addition, octopuses are highly intelligent, so they could adapt to the harsh conditions, find the best places under the ice, and survive. It's not known exactly what such cephalopods would look like, but they would clearly be different from their terrestrial relatives. Octopuses are certainly interesting. Dinosaurs are much more interesting. Scientists believe that dinosaurs did not only exist on Earth, they may exist right now but on other planets. The asteroid which caused the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 to 65 million years ago may also have caused the transfer of life to other planets outside the solar system. So say Japanese scientists who argue that bacteria can make interplanetary travels with fragments of rock knocked out into space by large asteroid impacts. In other words, after an asteroid impact, a lot of rock was thrown into space, some of which Earth's dinosaur bacteria attach themselves to. Many bacteria are famous for their survivability. Scientists have found bacteria on many planets and satellites in the solar system. Therefore, it's possible that together with the debris of the asteroid, bacteria and fragments of dinosaur DNA were transported outside the solar system, fell on some planet or even several planets, and since then a new life has been successfully born there. This principle is the basis of the panspermia theory, which suggests the possibility of transferring living organisms or their embryos through outer space. As for the alien dinosaurs, experts think they must be an advanced version of their ancient Earth relatives. They may have become much larger than Earth dinosaurs, and some experts even believe that other planets may be home to dinosaurs with intelligence comparable to that of humans. But where to look for them? It's believed that the bacteria may have reached the Gliese 581 system, where there may be good conditions for life. Or perhaps dinosaurs made it to Europa, Jupiter's satellite. If so, these subglacial octopuses certainly don't have to be bored. And what about other animals on different planets? Scientists say it all depends on what kind of planet it is. If the conditions on it are as close to Earth's as possible, 
It's possible that animals like those on Earth will live there. It's even possible that creatures very similar to humans might exist there. However, it's not that simple. Biologist Jonathan Losos from Harvard University believes that in the same ecosystem, animals with roughly the same set of characteristics may behave differently and not adapt identically to that ecosystem. This means that even if animals live on planets that are as similar as possible to Earth, they may not look like their Earth analogs. For example, they may have wings instead of limbs. Low gravity Other types of planets that are different from Earth can also be considered. For example, planets with low gravity. The most famous such planet is Mars. There, gravity is 62% lower than on Earth. There are plenty of such planets in space, and if there are animals on them, then they look exactly different from those on Earth. They would have less bone strength and muscle mass. They would most likely have long legs, part, and be tall. Animals of this type would be much easier to live in a low-gravity environment. Things will be different on planets with strong gravity. As an example, consider super-Earths. This is the name given to the class of planets that have more mass than Earth but less mass than Neptune. Greater mass usually means greater gravitational pull, and this affects the appearance of living creatures. Animals from super-Earths would be short and stocky. Crocodiles and monitor lizards would do well to live in such conditions, so you can imagine the representatives of these alien reptiles. Such body constitution would give them stability, better movement, and protection from painful falls. Also, animals from super-Earths would have large hearts, since it's much harder to pump blood under strong gravity conditions than under normal conditions. As for upright creatures, they probably don't exist on super-Earths, since the strong gravity would simply destroy them. Other stars Not all stars are the same. We see the world as it is, but things may be different in other systems. For example, there are stars that are red dwarfs, unlike our sun, a yellow dwarf. Such star is TRAPPIST-1. There's a planet, TRAPPIST-1d, near it, and if there are animals living there, they're clearly different from our animals. Most likely, the infrared range prevails on this world, so these animals have large eyes, about the same as those of aliens. They help them catch light. Also, these creatures are likely to have a reddish hue, which helps them to be seen by others. In addition, these creatures must have thick skin or even something like scales or a shell, which protects them from the excessive radiation. Red creatures in armor with bulging eyes. I like these alien animals. Water planets From the hot and radiation worlds, I suggest we move to the water worlds. There are planets in the universe that are almost entirely or completely covered by water. If you've seen the movie Interstellar, you probably remember that water planet near the black hole with the giant waves. If life forms exist on such planets, then these creatures must resemble our ocean animals. At the same time, it's likely that they would look more like prehistoric ocean monsters than modern aquatic inhabitants. Their main features would be huge fins, providing fast movement underwater, as well as bioluminescence, the ability to glow. After all, if there is a continuous ocean around, the light will be only at surface, so these animals wouldn't be able to peek at the darkest places of the ocean without a natural flashlight on their body. So we're done with potential animals on other planets, but what about sending our own animals to other planets and satellites? Is it possible? And what might it look like? Stay tuned to find out. Participants Not all animals are suitable for spaceflight, so we need to select candidates. As I said before, bacteria, which can survive in harsh conditions without much difficulty, would be perfect for this role. Also, tardigrades will easily overcome the flight. These creatures, though tiny, are incredibly resilient. They can survive in incredibly cold sea depths and even in space. This is confirmed by the fact that in 2019, Israeli tardigrades survived on the moon after a spacecraft crash. In addition, scientists believe that mice, flies, and surprisingly cows will survive spaceflight. For example, Yakut cows can tolerate frost as low as negative 94 degrees Fahrenheit, and they also feel fine in the heat, so they'll adapt both to the conditions of the flight and to new planets. Flight Space flight is always a long process, so animals will not be able to overcome it naturally. In order for them to reach their destination, they must be placed in cryo chambers where they'll hibernate. 
their metabolism will slow down to a minimum, and they'll be able to endure a flight lasting several months or even years. Arrival Once they arrive at their destination, the animals will not be able to set up or explore on their own, so they must be accompanied by a robot or even several robots on such a mission. They'll help the animals adapt, put them into protective suits, and let them out of the shuttle, and then help them set up a camp on the planet. And then there are several options. In the first, most optimistic one, the animals with the help of robots can create colonies and kind of farms on the planet or the satellite. And in the second option, they'll just stay on the planet for some time but won't come back. Researchers are planning to do similar tests in the coming years, so you and I will be able to watch such an unusual space mission. That's all, guys. Would you like to move to another planet? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.